Muhammad gets a special message from Allah to his dinner guests. So this reason is Muhammad's re revelation to his dinner, dinner guests. Guest. Why, why is this, why is this okay, important? Yeah, and we have to put it in context uh, what the Muslim view of the Quran is. Unlike the Bible, where we Christians believe, God raised up holy men whom he empowered by the Holy Spirit to record the words of God using their own personalities and human language to do so. So the Bible is divine and human in that the Bible is a document created in time and space using human agents whom the Holy Spirit taught what to say and how to say it. So it's divine and human. The Muslim view of the Quran is that it's the eternal, the uncreated speech of Allah. It does not incorporate any human speech whatsoever, right? It doesn't even incorporate Muhammad's personality in conveying Allah's revelation because this is Allah's speech. You can't say it's human speech. If it's human speech, it's not Allah's speech. And it's uncreated. Now with that said, let me read the verse and then bring out the implications because this verse not only talks about dinner guests, it also tells Muslims what not to do when Muhammad's wives become widows. 3353. <clears throat> o oh, you who believe, enter not the Prophet's houses. Catch it? Houses. Muslims will tell you that Muhammad is poor, right? He had a house for each one of his wives. Doesn't sound like he was too poor to me. Does it sound like he was poor to you? <laughs> All right. Enter not the Prophet's homes, except when leave is given to you for a meal. Don't come to any one of his homes unless permission is given to you to come there and eat. And then, not so early as to wait for its preparation. So if Muhammad invites you to dinner, don't show up at 4 o'clock when dinner is at 6. You better be there at 6. Don't come any earlier, right? But when you are invited, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm sorry, I have to stop myself from laughing. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but again, seriously, Muslims want to convince me this is the speech of Allah. But when you are invited, enter. And when you've taken your meal, disperse. When you finish meal, don't stick around. No chatting, no tea after your meal. Disperse, leave, without sitting for a talk. Verily, such behavior annoys the Prophet, and he is shy of asking you to go. But Allah is not shy of telling you the truth. Did you catch it? See, so you're yeah. laughing too here. <laughs> this, 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 I don't know why this cracks me up. If you think about this, right? People are coming over to Muhammad, and he's the Prophet, so they want to hang out with him, right? Yeah. And he won't, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's too shy to tell them, look, I really don't want to hang out with you. He'll go out and kill and slaughter, right? Yeah. He'll order his followers to kill and slaughter. He'll allow his followers to rape their female captives. He'll allow his followers to beat their wives into submission. But he won't, he, he's too shy, he's too shy to say, look, guys, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really late. Could you, could, you, could you stop asking me questions? He's too shy to say that. And it's coming from Muhammad. It's not from me, it's from Allah. It's not, from, it's not me saying that it's you're Allah annoying me. It. It's Allah saying that yeah. you're annoying me. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. And now notice what this, the implication of this. Now, this is supposedly the eternal, uncreated speech of Allah. So Muslims want to convince us that even before creation, Allah was busy thinking about all the people who would come to Muhammad's homes and annoy him, and therefore decided to rebuke them even before he created them, even before they existed, even before the situation transpired in time and space. Makes sense. So now, this leaves me to one of two conclusions. Either this event was predestined, Allah made sure that these people annoyed Muhammad in order to give a reason to send down this verse, which is part of his eternal speech, or Allah foresaw that these people would annoy Muhammad, and therefore made sure that his eternal speech included a word of rebuke. Either way, Allah in eternity was busy thinking about Muhammad and all the people that would annoy him. Either way. Now, quickly, let me just finish the last part. It is not right for you that you should annoy Allah's messenger, nor that you should ever marry his wives after him. This passage prohibited any of Muhammad's widows from ever remarrying. Now, not only is this <clears throat> troublesome to see that Allah, again, is busy worrying about Muhammad in eternity before Muhammad was created. This is troublesome for the fact that people like Aisha were widowed at the age of 18. Mm -hmm. Aisha was 18 when Muhammad died. And she was widowed without any children. And she lived all the way into her 50s. That means from the age of 18 all the way till she turned in, into her 50s, Aisha was not allowed to remarry and have children. Now again, is this an act of mercy from someone who is said to be a prophet of mercy, a mercy unto all creatures? What kind of mercy and compassion is this? To leave an 18-year-old a widow without children the rest of her life. And she didn't die five years later. 
She lived all the way into her 50s. Now, is this a merciful act? 